When working for a client, it can happen that you are not only responsible for choosing their furniture, it can also include choosing fixtures and equipment. You may or may not have heard of an F, F and E. This is a short form for furniture, fixtures and equipment. It's basically a list which designers prepare within a specific management program or just using Excel sheets or even Canva. Some also like to display the options using a sample board. This is especially useful for displaying the furniture. Some like to prepare the F, F and E during the design process. Some do it before or even after, so it's totally up to you and your design process. So what does this include? Obviously, a list or a sample board of the furniture. It helps to have our 2D spatial plan we created to see which size of furniture you can pick for each room. Remember when I told you that creating a spatial plan is super useful? Based on this 2D spatial plan, I could create those sample boards displaying my furniture I'm going to place without even starting my 3D. Where, rather than randomly searching for furniture, I like to find real products first, which can be actually bought, and create my 3D design based on that. Then you can also see that I have displayed some of my fixtures and finish, finishes in this sample board as well. In this example, only the floors, just to, to see how they will harmonize with my furniture. If for your project you also need to pick the fixtures and equipment, you could create a list like this. It includes trim and moldings, claddings or wall panels, paint colors, the flooring, fixtures for the kitchen, laundry room and bathrooms. It can also include you having to choose lighting. Those lists can get super long and detailed depending on the project and are very helpful to really think of each room and which furniture, fixtures and equipment you need to organize. In the next videos I will show you some specific fixtures and equipment and how to apply them. We already know how to apply flooring material. Let's now get to know how we can create baseboards, round molding and wainscoting. Let's start with the easy one, the baseboards. In order to create a baseboard using a special tool called Follow Me tool, we need to have a 2D profile and a line that the Follow Me tool uses to create the baseboard. First, we create a new layer for our baseboards. Then, we turn on our window and door tags to see better where our baseboard needs to go. Now we draw basic lines on the bottom of the floor. Make sure you have your correct layer selected. You can click once, click again and press escape in case the baseboard is interrupted by a door. If you need to toggle with the orbit mode, just go ahead and click O and back to click L. This way it stays connected to the last line. And escape to leave the tool. Let's turn out our wall layer, windows and doors. Now you can see the lines here. This is where our baseboard will be placed along. As I mentioned in the beginning, we need a 2D profile in order to create baseboards. We could create our own shape in the size we need, group it and rotate it so it stands up.
Then we move the left bottom corner to the line. Since the line breaks where the window is, I need to copy this shape to the other line as well. Then we click right, explode, so all lines are interconnected. Now comes the magic. We select the lines first and then you can find the follow me tool on the left toolbar. And once we click on the surface, it creates our baseboard. Let's not forget to group it. If you need a fancier shape, you can search the SketchUp warehouse. Just type in baseboard. You will find plenty. We are looking for a 2D flat shape. If you can't find it, you could also download the 3D file and just copy the surface. Again, I like to use a new file to download anything from the warehouse to not mess up with my original file. Let's now see how this shape will look. Let's copy the surface and move to our original file to place it. Don't forget to group it after you have placed it inside your file as we need to rotate it. Bottom left corner again to the line, copy it to the other side and explode. You could also click on the surface first and start holding down your mouse key and move along the line. I find it easier by selecting my lines first, but it's up to you how you do it. And this is how you create baseboards. Let's create a crown molding in the exact same way. We define the area by creating lines around, turning off the walls and windows. Let's search for a nice profile. We copy the 2D surface, place and group it so we can move it freely. Remember, the crown molding will go below the ceiling, so make sure to place it correctly. Once placed, we explode the 2D symbol, select the lines and use the follow me tool. For the wainscoting, it's the exact same process, only that you apply it horizontally. There might be even ready-made profiles that you can download and adjust the size or create your own profiles. Best is to try out and do not forget to recheck the scale of your profile if you download something from the warehouse. Okay, that's pretty much just the combination of lines and a 2D flat surface in order to create a 3D shape from it using the follow me tool. I'm going to finish my model creating baseboards. I'm not going to use crown molding or wainscoting as this does not go with my specific style in this case. But feel free to create or at least try it out once. Just so you have done it. In this video, you will have a look at how to create or find 3D wall panels. Some suppliers offer free DWG files. Let's have a look at Aurac Decor for instance. Check out their range. They have profiles for crown moldings, baseboards and 3D wall panels. You may find the technical drawing section and here you can download the DWG file, which obviously you can open in SketchUp. Depending on the supplier, you may only get a 2D surface, which is fine, you can just push-pull this one out. Or in this case, 
the cat file we got is already a 3D file. We just need to adjust its color. We could now rotate our wall panel, duplicate it and group the single panels into one whole group. Sometimes we may need to cut a piece off. Just bear in mind that some may be a component, so we would need to make it unique first before cutting the edges off. We can also create our own panels, as close to the original piece we got from the supplier. You get the idea. We basically build up our wall panels from a 2D surface, or we use ready-made 3D objects we get from the supplier or from the warehouse. I have created a couple of 2D profiles for you. You can find them by searching 2D wall panel Eden Springs. Just choose one of the three available. I'm going for the standard bar panel. Just rotate it and duplicate the profile as often as needed. You may need to cut the edges off. Just remember, it's a component. So, make the last one unique, to not start cutting all the profiles at the same time. Then, we just push-pull them out. And since those are clones from the original component, they will follow along. The last panel needs to be push-pulled manually, as we made it unique before, so it's not a clone any longer. And here we have our finished wall panel wall. I would like you to apply any of my profiles to this wall in the office, to those walls in the entryway, and the big wall in the bedroom. You don't have to start from scratch each, each time. You can just copy the push-pulled versions of the components. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. I think now it's clear to you how 3D wall panels can be built up. Just imagine them as a flat version and you could even create your very own. Applying paint color or wallpaper is super easy. Let's say you have the RGB or the hex code for a specific paint color. Do looks, for instance, provide those in their specifications. You can copy or write down the code, and once you switch back to the SketchUp, press B for the bucket and switch to the color slider section. Here you choose RGB slider and then you enter the RGB number or the hex color code and press enter. Now we can just apply the paint color to our walls. Make sure you have the correct layer selected when applying. You can also use the color picker from this window. Remember, it's not the color picker we use for sampling. This one will choose a pixel color from the monitor. So just move your mouse to the swatch and it will sample the color from the monitor. Okay, now we want to apply some wallpaper. As I have shown you in module 3, you can create your own seamless textures using Canva, finding materials in the warehouse or from any websites that I have provided. There are plenty of wallpaper textures. If downloading the texture from the warehouse as a material, it will be loaded in the in-model section and you can apply them directly. If you have an external file, you can import that file as a texture. It will also appear in your model section and then you apply it as well. 
Just adjust the scale as needed. See, it's super easy. For our Eden Springs project, I'm not going to use any paint. I'm also not going to use any wallpaper, but now you know how you could apply this if you need a specific paint or a wallpaper for your project. Feel free to try that out using a color hex code to any wall or search for wallpaper materials and apply that as well. We have to find our floor, baseboards and other finishes like 3D wall panels, paint colors or wallpapers. Now it's time to furnish our rooms. As I mentioned before, I like to create my 3D designs based on real products. So usually after I have completed a spatial plan, I create a shopping list or a sample board with all the products and accessories that I'm planning to purchase for the specific room. This way, I can already imagine if the furniture I picked looks great together. It gives me a direction, or let's say a guide, for my 3D design. Now comes the more challenging part. I need to find similar furniture in the SketchUp warehouse that I can use, or I can create my own furniture. Obviously, if you have a very common style, like coastal or japandi, most likely you will find something similar within the warehouse. You know that certain styles usually have a certain type and certain shapes of furniture, so you get lucky most of the times finding something that almost matches your products from their shopping list. A nice tip is to search for IKEA names. There are so many people building IKEA furniture and upload them to the warehouse for everyone to use. You will be impressed by how many IKEA products you will find within the warehouse. When searching for a specific product, I'm trying to not focus too much on the material. I rather focus on the shape of the product as the material is easily adjustable afterwards, while changing the shape or the style requires a bit more visual imagination and some more SketchUp experience. If you're a beginner in SketchUp, your end results may not get 100% accurate as your real products, as you may not be able to adjust the furniture yet, since you lack experience in 3D design, and lack experience in adjusting furniture and their single groups. But don't get stressed. With more time and try and error, you will be able to adjust the furniture from the warehouse and even create your own furniture in some point. I have created the furniture for the Eden Springs project completely from scratch. As a beginner, I recommend that you start with what's available in the SketchUp warehouse. I have uploaded the entire furniture for the Eden Springs home there as well. You are absolutely welcome to use them for this project or any of your future projects. So once you search for Balika Homes, you can visit my main page. And under Collections, you have different categories under which you will find certain furniture types and pieces. You obviously then have to use my furniture. You can also create a complete different style in Springs home if you wish. That's your choice. Just keep watching the videos on how I furnish the rooms and start building the custom-made cabinetry as well. Let's start to create a new layer dedicated for all my furniture and accessories. Now let's download some furniture for the entryway. As I turn on my spatial planning tag, we can see what I have planned for this space. You can turn it off and on whenever you need it. 
Right when you enter the entryway, we will have a custom-made wardrobe, which we will build in the upcoming video. Let's start with the furniture that will be purchased. So here I have a bench planned with this huge mirror. I would start searching for benches and see what looks similar to my original piece. In this case, I have built my own furniture. So I'm going to download a bench from my collection folder, Benches, and place it here. I can start rotating it and move it to the spot I like. I could use my scale tool and change its size. Just remember that it may distort if you going to use the scale tool on the whole group or component. Sometimes it's worth investigating on how the group or component is built, meaning does it have multiple groups inside the main component that I can move instead of distorting my whole piece? There is no right or wrong on how you build your furniture or adjust it, as long as you are happy with the outcome. Many clients also don't seek perfection when it comes to the 3D design. It's more about a general understanding of how the space will come together. I'm not saying to do less quality in your 3D. It's more about finding the right balance of your time investment and general design outcome. Sometimes something basic will work just as fine. Now let's download the XL mirror the pillows and the plants. In this corner, a nice statement armchair and a side table. For this area, I was planning to get a beautiful console table, a table lamp and some accessories like this book, a vase and a big shell ball. All of those products you find in my collection folders. Now let's place a beautiful artwork piece on this wall. I would like to give a huge thank you to Adele Naidu, an Australian artist for allowing me to showcase her artwork in our Eden Springs project. Her artwork pieces happen to enrich the whole design and just match perfectly the vibe I was going for in this project. You can download an empty shadow line frame from my collection and place the artwork of your choice inside the white area. Just import the art image as a texture, place it and adjust the scale if needed. Looking good already. What's missing is a wardrobe. I'm sure if you search for some IKEA wardrobe names, you'll find plenty of ready-made boxes that you could adjust to your desired look. But for this project, I would like you to practice to create a custom-made wardrobe. You can see how we built this wardrobe in the next video. For now, Feel free 
to furnish our Eden Springs entryway using the same furniture or search for other furniture pieces within the SketchUp warehouse. Let's open the PDF plan, which includes measurements for all custom cabinetry for our Eden Springs project. Let's have a look at cabinetry D1, our entryway wardrobe. If you work with inches, just use the inches PDF I provided. So this is the top view. It consists of two separate boxes. I will also include two side panels to kind of frame both boxes into one main wardrobe. I try to showcase this using an inspirational image on my sample board. Now you need to decide if you want to only build the shell, the outside box, or if you want to showcase the interior of the wardrobe as well. This will take some more time, but may be required at times. If you don't need to showcase the interior, just save yourself time and build only the exterior of the wardrobe. I use my spatial planning layer as a guide and now you know why I have created such a detailed spatial plan, as this will save me time right now. We could also use the measurements provided in the PDF if you were to build something based on a plan or measurements that you have. I do want to show you the real deal, so let's not just create simple boxes. Let's create the whole wardrobe, as this will give you a better understanding of building custom-made cabinetry. Let's start with the base or kickboard. Let's make it 100 millimeters or 3.94 inches high. We create a rectangle and push-pull the surface and then group it. Next, we need our frame. It's indicated in the PDF that the frame is 20 mm or 0.79 inches thick. We need three of them. So I create a rectangle and push-pull it up a bit. I group each of them separately. At this point I could decide the total height and mark it with a guard. I would like the carpenter to build this wardrobe in 2400 mm height which is also about 94.49 inches. I create a top base and move my top corner to this guide. Then I simply select all of the three side panels and use my scale tool to move them up as well. It's a rectangle, that's why scaling works great. Let's create our outside frame panel and push-pull this one up as well. Let's now do the interior. We can create a shelf, group it and copy it multiple times. We can always move them later as well, since they are a group. This will be one box that I may reuse again, so let's group it or create a component if you wish. I go back inside the group or component to continue working on it. Let's define the midpoint with a guide. Now we need doors. 
I want the do lower door to be 1,700 millimeters or 66.93 inches high. And the upper door is going to be 600 millimeters or 23.62 inches high. I use the same thickness as for the frame and push pull them out. Don't forget to group each part separately. This will help in case you need to make adjustments instead of having all lines interconnected as it makes it harder to adjust it afterwards. Now let's create the handles. I'm using the same thickness as for our side panels. Push pull this one out 30 millimeters or 1.18 inches. It can help to build upside down sometimes. Let's copy the outside line. Push pull this one up 20 millimeters or 0.79 inches. Then I group my handle, rotate to place, copy to the bottom and use the scale tool to adjust its length. Select one handle and door and group them together. The same for the bottom. Let's use the X-ray mode and adjust the inside shelves. What we haven't adjusted yet are the gaps between the cabinet fronts. You don't have to create a gap. But if you do want to be really, really exact, you could create a gap of about 2 to 4 millimeters or about 0 0.079 inches between the doors. But this is for people with OCD like me. Obviously, if you let this cabinetry built by the carpenter, he will know how much of a gap to leave between the, the fronts. And then we can copy it to the other side. Now, if this is a component and I would like to change the interior, we would need to make it unique. If it's just a group, we could go inside the group and just adjust the shelves. So instead of the shelves, I could create a hanging rod, for instance. I could open the doors to see inside and even fill the wardrobe with clothes from the warehouse. And here we have our finished wardrobe. Feel free to recreate this wardrobe. Download it from the warehouse if you don't need to practice or create even your own custom wardrobe based on any inspirational image you found on Pinterest. In this video, we will start furnishing the Eden Spring home office. But before we dive into that, I would like to share a couple of valuable tips to optimize your performance in SketchUp. You will quickly notice that the more furniture you add to your project, the slower it may become. 
This slowdown can happen rapidly depending on your computer performance. To address this issue, what you could do is instead of designing an entire house within one single file, consider creating separate files for each room and representing them individually to your clients. If you do prefer a single file approach like our Eden Springs project, you can improve performance by organizing your furniture onto separate tags, just as I have done here. I have simply renamed the previous tag Furniture and Accessories to Furniture Entryway. Then I turned it off and created additional tags for the office and other rooms. Any layers you are not currently using should be turned off to optimize performance. SketchUp continuously processes all the lines and edges within your file which can strain your computer's resources. Loading items from the warehouse can also be time-consuming. Here is a useful trick. Download the furniture to your desktop instead of directly into your file. After selecting the appropriate layer in SketchUp, import the downloaded SketchUp furniture into it. This method is typically faster than loading directly from the warehouse. And if there are no layers within the furniture file, it will automatically be placed on the correct office furniture tag. You can find a file in the download section that includes all the furniture pieces from our Eden Springs project. This saves you from searching the warehouse for individual items. If you are dealing with large files, consider upgrading your RAM for smoother performance as well. Also, don't forget to periodically purge unused objects and materials. It may take some time if you haven't done it in a while, so just grab a coffee and let it run for some minutes. Now, moving on to our Eden Springs office, I have already furnished as I mentioned earlier, all furniture pieces are available in the download section or in the warehouse. Let's take a closer look at this custom-built low board and see how I have constructed it. It's essentially a combination of rectangles that I push-pulled out and placed them together. There are no cures involved, so this is pretty much easy to rebuild. If you're up for a challenge, you could try to recreate it or design your unique version. I had to adjust my wall panels because they were initially positioned all the way down. When creating custom cabinetry, consider adding wall panels after placing the furniture piece, allowing your cabinetry to be flush with the wall. I made these panels unique since I copied and use them in the hallway as well, otherwise they would have been cut at the bottom there as well. Then I added a stunning oversized artwork piece by Adele Naidu. Using fewer but larger furniture pieces in your design can create a clean look and you get this wow factor when people enter the room. Now let's explore the custom shelf system I designed. Remember. My client is an interior designer herself, so she requested custom-made shelves to showcase her samples. I created a system where the shelves can be hung on a wall attached to a single bar, providing flexibility in movement. Isn't this an excellent way to manage your favorite materials in SketchUp as well? You can create swatches and use this shelf to organize your material collection just like you would in real life. Then, place the shelf in your new project and easily reuse your textures. Next, I added a desk with an armchair and a sitting area. You might wonder why I haven't added wall or ceiling lights yet. Don't worry, I have a dedicated module for light lighting later in my course, so we covered that in Dewey time. Let's move onto furnishing the bedroom. Here I used furniture for my collection photos as well. I did make a change in this corner. Initially 
I planned to place a plant, but during the design process I realized it might be a bit too crowded in here. So I removed it and repositioned the bed more centrally. This showcases the importance of a 3D design. It allows you to spot issues that might not be evident in a 2D spatial plan. You can place real size products and see how they will fit together. Additionally, I felt something was missing above the desk area, which I haven't thought of. While a mirror or artwork could work, I decided that wall panels and a wall lamp later on would be the best choice to avoid overcrowding the space. For the closet area, I decided to use the same wardrobe boxes. While I could copy those boxes from the entryway and start tagging and moving all lines and edges to my bedroom furniture layer, sometimes this can take some time as you need to move all lines and all surfaces to another uh, layer. So I prefer to just download the piece into my desktop and import it again. The untagged layer in the original file will let me easily place it into my new layer without having to tag or move lines or edges. Just keep that in mind. In the empty space, I would like some open shelves, which we can quickly assemble. Finally, we can group all the boxes, copy them to the other side and flip them for symmetry. That's all for now. It's your turn to personalize the office, the bedroom and the closet area to your liking. If you'd like more practice with custom cabinetry, feel free to recreate the office storage wall and the wardrobe or design your own from scratch using inspirational images. So I have already furnished the living room area. 
feel free to use my furniture or completely different pieces from the warehouse. In module 6, you will find a video on how I created the TV wall, which is basically using the same boxes from the entryway and office and just adjusting its size. I'm quickly going to apply some wall panels in here too, just by copying them from the office as they have the same height 